Welcome to Colonel Basketball Weekly, featuring the head coaches of Nichols State University Basketball, J.P. Piper and Doobie Plaisance. Colonel Basketball Weekly is presented by State Farm. Contact your local State Farm agent today and get to a better state. Colonel Basketball Weekly is also sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. Rouse's, either you're local or you're not. Good afternoon and welcome to the debut of Colonel Basketball Weekly featuring J.P. Piper and Doobie Plaisance presented by State Farm Insurance. I'm your host, Mike Wagenheim. Each week throughout the Southland Conference season, we'll bring you game footage, interviews, and special features. Coming up in today's program, we'll reset the men's and women's seasons, getting you caught up on what went down during non-conference play before taking you through the opening weekend in the Southland Conference. Now, it was a grueling month of December for the Colonel men but the battle-weary squad is ready to turn the tables. Pamela Johnson has the story. It has become a race against time for the Nickel State University men's basketball team as they make their way to the Southland Conference Tournament. The talent is present, but the Colonels must find the right mindset and intensity to improve a record that serves them no justice. The Colonels spent the entire month of December on the road playing out a seven-game stretch. The burden of constant traveling took a toll on them mentally and physically, but the team used that as an opportunity to gain toughness and prepare themselves for the conference slate. The Colonels headed into league play with a 1-9 and nine record, yet they moved forward with the mindset of leaving the past behind. It's actually been probably the toughest pre-conference experience I've had since I've been at Nichols. Uh, only one home game games against some traditional basketball powers in schools like Michigan State, Missouri, Vanderbilt. We have to travel uh, by plane, then we've got to travel by car another hour, then the weather is, is you know, eight, nine, ten degrees outside, it's snowing. Um, I know those sound like excuses, but that's, that's not a normal day for us. So it's been a tough go. Um, I think the record probably doesn't indicate how good a team I think we have. Probably one of the toughest schedules in the country uh, in terms of the home and away and then who the opponents were. I still have high expectations for our team. I think we've grown and learned some tough lessons. Uh, I wish we could experience a little more victory along the way, uh, but I think that's in our future. I think as we round ourselves into conference play, we have a chance to still be a good Southland Conference team. And the message today in practice was we're zero and zero. It's a new season, and um, you know I think they responded to that. We had good energy today. They're enthusiastic. I think there's a belief that we're about to start winning some games. So uh, I think we're in a good place. Guard Fred Hunter is one of only two seniors on the court this season after returning from a year-long absence due to a knee injury. Hunter made his presence immediately known as he was named the year's first Southland Player of the Week and currently sits among the league leaders in points, rebounds, and steals. I think it's been a slow season for us. It's a lot of ups and downs, haven't really been winning too much, but I don't know, I guess it comes with the team. Like We had a bunch of injuries, like players sick, missing out some games. I missed a few games, and we haven't been really focused. and been where we needed to be to be successful. So we just got to get that right. The team now has an opportunity to regain their composure in a familiar environment after being away from home for a significant amount of time. The Colonels may have come up short on the road, but that is not holding them back from aiming to defend their territory at Stouffer Gymnasium. Yeah, we always like, I think we always play better at home because we're home in front of our home crowd and we have to defend our home. And, one of our goals was not to lose any home games. And I guess it just feels better to play on your home court. You're more comfortable with everything, all your surroundings. And you just feel right playing that. Hopefully the balance of playing at home gives you a chance to win. And um, there, there is an art to winning on the road. And we, we've got to figure that out. We've got to learn how to win on the road. Last year, the men's basketball team had one of the youngest rosters in the nation with seven newcomers. This season, they welcomed back four starters and nine total letter winners with over 50% of the team scoring returning. Freshman T.J. Carpenter is already stepping up and making a name for himself. He was named to the Utah State World Vision Challenge All-Tournament team, averaging nearly 16 points a game. 
Carpenter has not let the shock of transitioning into college life throw him off track. Yes, yeah, the first couple of games, you know, I, I had the nervous butterflies in my stomach, but after the first couple of games, I got used to it. It felt like high school again, really. But right now, I'm still learning more stuff as we go through practice every day, but I'm getting used to it. The Colonels continue to work hard on building great chemistry on and off the court. They believe that there's nowhere else to go but up as they continue on in conference. It's still bright for us. I mean, the first nine games, ten games are over with. That was preseason. Now we start conference. So everybody's zero and zero. So we still have a chance to have a chance to win conference and win the tournament. So. Within our league, we should be very competitive. And uh, win or lose, the game should be exciting and fun to watch. And uh, I expect to win more of them than we lose. The team's positive outlook for the rest of the season is one to be admired. This further demonstrates the quality of the Colonel's players and coaches, as well as enhancing the fact that they are a team to be reckoned with. Reporting for Colonel Basketball Weekly, I'm Pamela Johnson. Thanks, Pamela. It was certainly good to be home last Thursday night as the Colonels opened South in Conference play against Central Arkansas. Only the second home game all year for Nichols and the first in over five weeks. The Colonels needed this one. They needed it badly. UCA coming into this contest at 5-5 five and five on the season. The club, a three-point shooting juggernaut and a pressing team that was averaging nine steals a game. Opening minutes. Colonels here trying to break down the zone, working around the perimeter to TJ Carpenter. He's now made three or more threes in a game six times. UCA in transition, down to Barrette, ahead to Robert Crawford for the pull-up three. Seven minutes in, we're tied at 12. Crawford went four of seven from downtown. The Bears go on an 11-0 run off a miss. Ryan Williams with the oop to Anthony Borden. Nichols down six, their largest deficit of the night. But the Colonels run off 10 of the next 12 points. Shane Relier coast to coast. He had a season high 15 points. Nichols would take the lead a minute later. Amin Torres breaks a press, whips it ahead to Lyndon Smith Hyde for the bonus ball. 22 to 20 Colonels. Lyndon solid off the bench. Barrette for UCA just didn't miss. Garner's off the mark here. Offensive board though for Terrell Brown. Kicks it out to Barrette for the three. He was six of six from the field. Barrette though turns it over here. He never saw Fred Hunter. Nichols with 10 steals. Fred leads a break ahead to Jeremy Smith, who spots Torres for the jumper. Nichols up three inside of two minutes. A frustrating night for Garner. His teammates got him the ball, got him some good looks, but he goes 0 of 7 from the arc. Nichols ends the half on an 8-1 run. They lead 38 to 30 at the break. Take your early second half here. Hunter denies the entry pass from Deshaun McClure, and the Colonels are off and running. Realgay leaves it for Smith. Jeremy, starting in place to the injured Lachlan Press, scored his season-high 16. The lead is up to 10 before Garner dishes back to Crawford here, who hits it from the top of the key. He scored a game-high 21 points. Fred Ham uh, Hunter answers, though. He had 15 in the second half. The baseline drive and spin. It's 52-43 Nichols with under 15 minutes to play. The Bears close within four, and then Hunter with the pump fake and scoop. It won't go, but he out-rebounds three Bears and finishes. But Central Arkansas scores nine of the next 11. Jordan Harks gets the ball out near midcourt, finds a seam here, and drives through uncontested. The lead is cut to two with eight minutes remaining. The Colonels do recover in transition. Torres into a double team, leaves it for the trailing Carpenter. The pull-up three, TJ with 17 points. Under five minutes now. Torres here with the post feed to Smith. He never got squared, but still able to drop it down. Nichols up nine, looks like they got this thing, but the Colonels make just two of eight free throws down the stretch. The lead is four with 12 seconds left when Shane Relier misses. Garner with the rebound, ahead to Williams, and back to Garner. Now he misses another three, but Crawford is there for the tip in. Timeout UCA, Nichols up two with three seconds left. Carpenter gets fouled with a second to play. He makes the first to stretch the lead to three, and the freshman calmly nails the second. That put the game away. The Colonels are an 83-79 winner. A desperation play here at the end of the ball game for UCA would fail. The seven-game skid falls by the wayside. Home sweet home for the Colonels. UCA falls to five and six with the loss. The Colonels would face a new challenge on Saturday. The Oral Roberts Golden Eagles join the South in this season after years of dominance in the Summit League and Mid-Continent Conference. They were the immediate favorites to take the South in title, and they've immediately 
proven their worth. After a convincing victory in their league debut at Southeastern Louisiana on Thursday, ORU made their presence known in Thibodeau and set the tone for a new rivalry. ORU featuring the league's leading scorer, Warren Niles, gets the ball baseline. He misses, but Damon Bellholter tips it in. Bellholter had a huge week. He was Southland Player of the Week. He take this one over here, scoring four straight buckets early. The lob from Niles. Bell Holter on his way to a 26.7 rebound, four block performance. Eagles up 10 early. Not hard to figure out who the ball's going to at this point. He tosses Hunter out of there like a ragdoll. Fred only played 15 minutes with back problems. ORU going for the early kill. The steal out front by Niles. He finishes with a dunk just six minutes in. Nichols down a dozen. Colonel's trying to keep pace. Corey Bilberry flying up the floor here. His sideline pass stolen by Rielye. He outraces Niles. The Colonels close within seven at the midway mark of the half. Back down 12, though, at the six-minute mark. Carpenter out front, sees nothing down low, kicks it to Smith for the three. Jeremy into double figures again. He ended the day with 11 points. But ORU would not give any ground. DJ Jackson finds Niles for the mid-range jumper. Niles would go down here, but he'd come back soon. He scored 15 by halftime. The Colonels down 41-26 at the break. Dantrell Thomas, one of the bright spots for the Colonels in an otherwise dim day. Up and under, and the foul here. DT with a team-high 19 points. Jamarcus Horace deflecting the Jordan Kaufman turnaround here. Amin Torres comes away with it, leading in transition. He hits a tough runner. Torres scored 11 all in the second half. Nichols down 14 with 10 minutes to go. But ORU just too much to handle. They set Niles up at the top of the key. He scored a game-high 29. He and Bell Holter combined for 55 of the team's 76 points. Nichols forced 20 turnovers. DT with the steal and lay in late, but it's not nearly enough. The red and gray fall 76 to 63. ORU at 7-7 seven and seven after the victory. Nichols at 2-10. and 10. The Colonels faced McNeese and Southeastern Louisiana this week. We'll have highlights of those games on next week's program for you. Well, it's been a banner year thus far for the Nichols women's basketball team. Coming up next on Colonel Basketball Weekly, presented by State Farm Insurance, we'll go inside the locker room to talk with the players and head coach Doobie Plaisance about the building of a contender. Stay with us. Does State Farm let me bundle auto, home, and life to save money? Sure. We practically invented bundling. And it all stays with State Farm. So my policies don't go to some bundling center. <laughs> that ships them off to some bundle factory. <laughs> I'm dealing with you and not some bungling, bustling bundle builders. Who have you been working with? Stay with the company you trust. Bundle and save with your local State Farm agent. At Rouse's, we love football. We love the players, we love the fans, and you know we love the food. So whether it's high school, college, or pros, if there's a game, we're tailgating. You can tackle your tailgate, too, with one stop by Rouse's. Get Rouse's ready to grill meat, chicken, and pork, or pick up Rouse's ready-to-serve tailgate specials. Everything is made fresh for the game, and you know it's all good. So get the home field advantage every time you shop. Shop local. Shop Rouse's. Now that's tailgating. Back with you on Colonel Basketball Weekly, presented by State Farm Insurance. The Nichols women's basketball team has improved every season under fifth-year head coach Doobie Plaisance. Their current campaign has them on track to seriously compete for a conference title. Ashley Dufrin gives us an inside look. This season, the Nichols women's basketball program is rewriting record books. Although most teams start to make their mark in March, this club has built the confidence to be a contender in the Southland come tournament time. The Colonels have started their campaign with a bang, blazing out to the best start in the program's history. The players point to their head coach, Doobie Plaisance, as the force behind their early success. Um, she prepared us to get in condition, first of all. Um, she let us know it's not going to be easy. Practice has been tough every day. Coach is always really big on preparation. She thinks um, you know, the will to win isn't as big as the will to prepare to win. We come to practice every day and work on the intangibles and some of the things that we need to work on, our strengths as well as our weaknesses. While these student athletes praise their coach, Plaisance in turn gives full credit to her team for their recent accomplishments. Uh, the credit needs to go to the, the women themselves. I haven't changed a thing that I've done for the most part in terms of the foundation of my philosophy. How I condition them in the spring, how I condition them in the summer, how I condition them in the fall. They bought into it in the spring, in the summer, in the fall. And they're the ones that have put themselves in a position to really prepare themselves 
for the best start in Nickel State women's basketball history. Preparation is one of the main factors contributing to the Colonel's success, but it is the little things that keep this team striving as the season progresses. Uh, some of the little things that we'll do is, you know, we'll miss a uh, block out here and there, so Coach will, you know, have a small, like, block out drill where we focus specifically, like, on that drill. Rebound, getting up down the floor, smart decision, passing. Um, just really taking, know your person, personnel, first of all. We have to know our personnel, so that's how she helped us with the little things. Based on the way the season has started, the players are confident they have what it takes to make a run at the conference title. I mean, right now I think we have a little set of confidence on us. Like at first it was kind of, I mean, we were winning, but we, were, we still weren't playing well, but we were still winning. We've had a pretty tough schedule. We've only lost, you know, really, really big teams. So the way that it's looking, I think we're going to do really well. We have a chance on winning all of our games out of, um, here on out. Like Coach says, the only team we have to worry about is ourselves because whenever we're ready to play, no one can stop us. The team's lone senior, Alicia Allen, has played a tremendous role in the program's progression. Now finally, everything seems to be falling into place for a title run. Um, I feel like I'm in a good position to make my mark, um, as well as everyone else on the team. And we have a big opportunity here uh, to come together and do something that's never before been done. And I feel like as long as I've been here, if I feel like this is the year, and so I feel like we can really make a change and really make a difference. And we have the team, and we have the talent, and we have the capability to do everything that is out there for us to achieve. Players and coaches have recognized the fast start from one of their freshmen, Amani White, who has already stepped up in key situations at critical times, and they look for her to play a huge part down the stretch. Amani has been such a blessing, and not in terms of her skill set. Amani was recruited based on knowing that we can take some pressure off KK in terms of playing KK at a two sometime and KK not being the only ball handler, handler on the floor. We knew Amani had that skill set. Where well, the credit goes to Amani is her ability as a freshman to step up and play not like a freshman. She knows a lot is uh, relied on upon her in terms of taking pressure off the ball, balancing our offense, and quite frankly, bring a lot of versatility to our offense because not only can she handle the ball, Monty can shoot lights out. She's come out and she's helped us so much. Um, her ability to get to the hole as well as be able to knock down a three has pretty much like helped all of us. Um, she can handle the ball very well. And so when she gets in the lane, you know, not only is she looking for her shot, but she's looking for her other players. And we we feed off of the energy that she brings and when we have energy you know her coming off the bench really does improve our strength as a team mixing in the freshman with a veteran core is part of plays on strategy for keeping this team moving in the right direction my strategies have always been to win from within you know i believe at this level you wouldn't be here if you can't be athletic enough to make a stop or have some kind of offensive skill set I've always been the type of coach to try to pull from within. Whatever a player thinks she can do, it is my job to get her to realize you can surpass that. And that's how I've always coached my teams. You got to dig, it's the intangibles. They might know you're a shooter. They might know you can put it on the floor. They might know you can make great stops and make steals. But what, I'm, what I like to tell my players all the time, they can't guard what they can't see. They can't guard your head. They can't guard what's in your heart. Last year, the Colonels were the Cinderella story of the Southland Conference Tournament. This time around, they're not going to catch anyone off guard. The league is on notice that Nichols is playing to win and won't settle for anything less. For Colonel Basketball Weekly, I'm Ashley Dufa. Thank you very much, Ashley. The women also opened their Southland season last Thursday night, taking on Central Arkansas. The last time these teams met was in the Southland Tournament, when the Colonels stunned the number one seeded Sugar Bears by 20 points in the first round. Now Nichols was looking to prove that was no fluke, while UCA had revenge on their minds. The Colonels had to contend again with two-time Southland Player of the Year, Megan Herbert, and the Sugar Bears wasted no time getting the ball in her hands. First minute, the feed here, and Herbert out muscles Leanne McCarthy. Plenty more where that came from, unfortunately. Now, the Colonels looking to speed it up here. KK Babin catches UCA off guard with the outlet to Alicia Allen. Allen would have herself a productive evening. Five minutes in, UCA escapes the trap, and a post feed coming to Courtney Duver. Now she would turn here and spots Brittany Gowans for the open three, and the Colonels 
are down 11 to 4. Nichols replies. McCarthy gets the ball on the wing. The Jasmine Scott screen gives her a little bit of room, and she drills a three. McCarthy scored 11, but UCA goes on a 12 to 2 run. Gowans with the post lob to Herbert. The help just a little bit late in coming. The deficit is 10 with eight minutes left in the half. Herbert with 11 first half points. The margin grows to 15 as McCarthy airballs a three, but Selena Ellis tracks it down. She hands it to Babin, who blasts right by Chantel Mars, uh, Moss for the lay-in. Babin with 10 points and seven boards. Last two minutes, the Colonels chip away. Allen, right elbow on the pick and pop. Scott finds her for the three. The lead for UCA whittled down to 10. Final seconds before the break, Herbert gets the ball, defended very well here. So she defers to Courtney Duver, who drops it in from the corner. Duver scored 18, the Colonels down 37-21 at the half. After the intermission, UCA scores the first eight points. Duver here with the lay-in. Brittany Gowans with the assist, she had seven helpers. Herbert, meanwhile, unstoppable. She gives it up here for just a moment and then gets it right back. Quick trigger three here with a hand in the face. 33 points, 11 rebounds, and four assists for Herbert. The deficit hovered around 20 for much of the second half. Allen batting the ball away there. Imani White leads a break, dishing to Allen for the finish. Alicia with 21 points and eight boards. The Colonels get it down to 15 with under seven to go. In transition, Babin gets a friendly bounce three on the helper from White. Nichols shot 43% outside the arc but Herbert is simply too much to handle. Even two Colonels can't stop her here. UCA wins going away, 72 to 56, the final. The setback dropping Nichols to eight and four on the year. Now the Colonels would not have to wait long to bounce back. On Saturday, they hosted Oral Roberts and Alicia Allen preparing to shine again as she gets her teammates ready to go here. Take you to Stouffer Gym, opening minutes, KK Babin to Allen on the baseline, drives, pumps and fires. The Colonels are up five early. Now, Allen would get cut off coming up here. But Leanne McCarthy gets the kick out, and she nails a three. It's 11 to four Nichols. Timeout, Oral Roberts. The Colonels shot 55% from the field in the first half. ORU wakes up, though. Christian Key penetrates and kicks out for the Taylor Cooper three. The Golden Eagles efficient beyond the arc in the opening half. They went four of six. A minute later, McCarthy with some tough defense on Cooper. She dishes to J.C. Bigham, who gets the floater to fall. ORU on a 15-4 run. This game was a seesaw battle, though. Six-minute mark, Jasmine Scott in the post. Seals off Sarah Shelton, the perfect pass for McCarthy. Game tied at 27. Scott, in her first start, scored 12 points. Four minutes left before halftime. McCarthy hands to Scott. Dribble drive and the lay-in. We are square at 29. This contest featured 13 ties and 14 lead changes. Allen had 10 points by the break. Scott gets her the ball here for the turnaround. It's 29 all. Final minute, Jenny Nash on the wing enters to Allen and out for Babin for a long three. Nichols takes a 38 to 35 advantage into the locker room. Back and forth through the second half. 13 minutes left, Babin baseline to Allen. We're tied at 48. Now out of the frame here, Jenny Nash would sneak in and she takes the inbounds pass away from Cooper. Nash winds up scoring 12 of her 14 points after halftime. She pulls up for the three and Nichols retakes the lead. Now big sequence here inside of three minutes. Bigham, right wing, lobs to Sarah Shelton for the lay in. 63-61, Nichols neither side led by more than four in the second half. Now the Colonels bring it down the floor. Imani White up top has her pocket picked here by Bigham. Kevin Looper comes away with it here, one-on-one -on -one against White, and we wind up having conflicting calls by the officials. The lead official called a charge, negating the made basket, but the crew gets together, and they wind up reversing this call. It's a foul on White, count the bucket, Looper makes her free throw, ORU up one. Last two minutes, White up top to Babin, who swings it to Nash, the pretty runner, 65-64 Nichols. Next ORU possession here, Babin falls down defending Looper. The three is off the mark, but the rebound ricochets to Shelton for the lay-in. With a minute left, the Colonels are down a point. Nichols winds up turning it over. ORU has it here for the inbounds. 20 seconds left. Cooper inbounds to Bigham, harassed by White. It goes out of bounds, ruled off of Bigham, and now the Colonels have a shot. 10 seconds left. White gives to Allen. She wants this shot. She's got this shot, and she hits it. Nichols up by one, and then another big play here out of the frame as Imani White steals the inbounds pass, and she is fouled. With four seconds left, White is heading to the line. Imani makes both free throws. Three-point ball game. 
It's going to be up to Bigham to try to tie it up here. Defended all the way down the floor by White, forces her into a contested shot, no good. Nichols, a 69 to 66 winner. The Colonels improved in nine and four overall, one and one in the South, and the Colonels held Looper, one of the most prolific scores in NCAA history, to just 12 points on four of 15 shooting. What a ball game. We've got more coming up on Colonel Basketball Weekly, presented by State Farm Insurance. Stay with us. Does State Farm let me bundle auto, home, and life to save money? Sure. We practically invented bundling. And it all stays with State Farm. So my policies don't go to some bundling center. <laughs> that ships them off to some bundle factory. <laughs> I'm dealing with you and not some bungling, bustling bundle builders. Who have you been working with? Stay with the company you trust. Bundle and save with your local State Farm agent. At Rouse's, we love football. We love the players, we love the fans, and you know we love the food. So whether it's high school, college, or pros, if there's a game, we're tailgating. You can tackle your tailgate, too, with one stop by Rouse's. Get Rouse's ready to grill meat, chicken, and pork, or pick up Rouse's ready to serve tailgate specials. Everything is made fresh for the game, and you know it's all good. So get the home field advantage every time you shop. Shop local. Shop Rouse's. Now that's tailgate. Back with you on Colonel Basketball Weekly, presented by State Farm Insurance. It's time to announce our Rouse's Student Athlete of the Week, sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. Either you're local or you're not. Rouse's Supermarkets are local, with their roots established in Thibodeau in 1923. Trust Rouse's for great food and great values. Louisiana's best can be found at your local Rouse's or at Rouse's.com. Our Rouse's Student Athlete of the Week, Senior forward Alicia Allen, who averaged 19 and a half points and eight and a half rebounds in conference play last week, and she knocked down that game winner against Oral Roberts. Alicia sitting amongst the uh, league leaders now in scoring and block shots. Folks, want to let you know, coming up on Thursday, January the 24th, it's going to be time to stuff Stouffer, a doubleheader against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. It's been a while since we've had a sellout crowd at Stouffer Gym, but with the women in a conference title hunt, the men starting to get some momentum going as well. It's time to pack this place. We'll have a special tailgate right outside the gym from 3 to 5 p.m. The women's game against Texas A&M Corpus Christi begins at 5.30. The men's contest will tip off at approximately 7.30. We hope you're at every game this season, but if you only choose one night to come out to Stouffer Gym, make it Thursday, January 24th, as we stuff Stouffer. Folks, that is going to do it for our show today. More information available on Nichols Athletics and our official website, GoKernels.com. That's G-E-A-U-X, GoKernels.com. Thanks so much for joining us on our debut episode. We'll talk to you every Thursday afternoon at 3 o'clock. We'll see you coming up next week. Today's show has been presented by State Farm. Contact your local State Farm agent today and get to a better state. This show has also been sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. Rouse's, either you're local or you're not. This has been a presentation of the Colonel Sports Network.